All right, so what we're gonna be looking at now is we're gonna actually work to uh, change a linear transformation to a matrix and vice versa. So we've got T and T is a linear transformation and A is gonna be the matrix associated with T, okay? So what we wanna do, our goal here is to actually take a linear transformation, turn it into a matrix, and then take a matrix and turn it back into a linear transformation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, well, I wanna define my uh, linear transformation T going from V to W, okay? And so the dimension of V is gonna equal N and the dimension of W is gonna equal M. So I'm gonna imagine, let's take for example, we wanna take T and we're gonna, ha we're gonna go from R to, uh, R3 into R2, okay? R3 into R2. And so consequently, that means my inputs for my matrix that I'm gonna create here, if I have a matrix for the linear transformation, is going to be X1, X2, X3. Okay, it's gonna be three dimensional and my output is going to be Y1, Y2. So it's gonna be an R2. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna multiply by three dimensional vectors, R3 vectors, and I'm gonna output into R2 vectors. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna figure out what kind of matrix that I'm gonna need for that. Well, one, I'm gonna need three columns. I'm gonna need three columns, okay, because I need to be able to take the dot product. I need to be able to do this, uh, this multiplication. I have to be able to do that. And then I'm gonna need two rows, okay? Two rows, and that's because um, my output space is two-dimensional, okay? So what we're gonna see here, we're, remember we're gonna say the dimension of V is equal to N. Well, in this case, right, that means that N is three, Three is the number of columns. So A is, okay, three is the number of columns, my input space, and my output space is two dimensional and that goes with the number of rows. There's two rows there, so A is two by three, okay? So basically, this kind of just demonstrates that if the dimension of V equals N and the dimension of W equals M, then A is M by N. And sometimes it's a little tricky to kind of remember. I mean, like, basically I have to draw, <laughs> you should have seen how many times I actually had to redo this thing. Um, I have to kind of draw the matrix or draw a, an example matrix to kind of keep everything straight for me. Basically what that is telling me is, is that the dimension of V is N, so that's the number of columns, and the dimension of W is the number of rows. And that's it, okay? And so this is gonna become a guideline for us to be able to actually go in and um, generate these matrix matrices of linear transformations. So now we have a theorem that's actually also gonna be kind of helpful for us. And the theorem is, is this one, okay? So we've got T, it's a linear transformation going V into W, okay? And we define T of X equals AX, okay? Where A is an M by N matrix. So what that means for us is, is that, right, okay, my input, that means um, V is N dimensional. And M is N dimensional. Oh, excuse me, M, W is M dimensional. Okay, then we're going to define what that's gonna give us is that A is gonna equal T of E1, T of E2, all the way out to T of EM, T of EN, excuse me, T of EN, okay, T of EN, where E1, E2, so on and so forth, EN is the standard basis for V. So basically, if we could figure out the standard basis of V. So basically what we wanna do is we wanna actually be able to figure out what the linear transformation is under the standard basis, all right? We're gonna do something actually really, really basic here that's gonna kinda of help us do this, gonna make things really, really quick. But if we're given 
the transformation vectors, then it's actually pretty simple to figure out what the matrix of the transformation is, okay? In addition to that, we can actually just go in and utilize um, those standard basis vectors in order to generate for us the matrix. And we'll, we'll see how, to, how that gets done in just a moment, okay? So we're gonna use this, right? And this is, by the way, this is called the matrix of T. So this is called the matrix of T. So let's say, for example, I've got T of X1, X2, X3 equals, and this is gonna be negative X1 plus three X3, negative two X3, two X1 plus five X2 plus minus nine X3, and negative seven X1 plus five X2. Okay? So I'm gonna look here, and so this is, if we notice here, T is going to take vectors in R3. So T goes from R3, and how we know that is we got three inputs, X1, X2, X3, into vectors in one, two, three, four, so it's gonna go into R4. So we're gonna go from R3 into R4, all right, which means that A is four by three. So A is gonna end up being four by three, all right, okay. So four rows, three columns. And so what I do normally, like what if I, what I could do is I just start out with the standard basis vectors for um, R3. So that means that T of, and I'm gonna write them as column vectors. One, zero, zero equals, and then I'm just gonna plug in for X1. So this is gonna end up being the first, the first term here, okay? Because my output vectors are in R4 now. The first term is going to end up being negative one because it's negative one plus three times zero, okay? Right, just notice that that's, I'm just using that. Then it's gonna be zero because X3 is zero. Then we'll get two X2, okay? And then we're gonna get negative seven, okay? So that ends up becoming the first column of A. So if I'm generating A, A is gonna equal like, it's gonna look like this first, okay? So it's negative one, zero, two, negative seven. That's our first column. Now our second column, we got T of zero, one, zero. And that's gonna end up equaling, well, no, no X twos in the first term, no X twos in the second term. So it's gonna be zero, zero. I got five X twos, five. And then um, five X twos in the fourth row. So that means that my second column is zero, zero, five, five. Okay. Just notice all I'm doing is I'm plugging in now the one for X2, a zero for X1 and a zero for X3. And now T of finally zero, zero, one. So everywhere where I have an X3, I'm going to multiply that by one. Everywhere else is just going to zero out. So this means I've got my four dimensional vector. It's going to look like this. It's gonna end up being three, negative two, negative nine, and zero, right? Okay, three, negative two, negative nine, and zero. So we put that in there, three, negative two, negative nine, zero, and there's the matrix of the transformation A. Done, okay? Couple things to notice here. Notice that here, if we just took the x1 terms, the x1 terms here are gonna have negative one x1, zero x1s, two x1s, and negative seven x1. There's our coefficients, right? Okay, there's our coefficients. So this essentially is, or not essentially, it is exactly, negative one, zero, two, negative seven times x1. So just taking those coefficients, that ends up becoming the first column, by the way, column, right, in the matrix A. Look at the second column. The second column, we've got zero X2s. If I write that in terms of my X2s, I've got zero X2s, zero X2s, five X2s, and finally, five X2s. Okay, and that ends up becoming the second column. And there we go. 
And so basically what you can do when you get adept at this kind of thing is you can just look at the linear transformation and set up the matrix. Okay, and that's basically what you would do. Let's take a look at another example. So let's consider this example. We got t of x1, x2, x3 equals 4x1 minus x2, 5x1 plus x2 plus 4x3. And so we now want to find A. All right, we could go in and use our standard basis vectors, but remember what we did. What we did basically is we said, okay, let's take the coefficients. Well, actually, first, we need to get that t is going to go from R3 into R2. Okay, so t is, or excuse me, A is um, 2 by 3. So A is going to be 2 by 3. So essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to say, okay, well, look at my x1s, right? My x1 has a 4 as the x1, 4, and then 5. Okay, so the first column in A, now we're going to go by columns here, the first column is going to be 4, 5, right? 4x1, 5x1, that's 4, 5, there you go. The next column, column 2, is going to be negative 1, and then 1. And then the third column, there's 0, x3 is there, so it's going to be 0 and 4. And that is A. And there is your matrix of your linear transformation. Now let's talk about transforming back to the linear transformation. Let's take A. And we'll see that a, right, is going to be 4, negative 1, 0, 5, 1, 4. Okay? And so, instead, when we actually went from linear transformation to um, matrix, we went and we kind of generated the columns. Now we're going to read along the rows to give us back our linear transformation. So t, 1, we know that t is going to go from, right, r3, 1, 2, 3 into R2, okay? And that is because um, N is the number of columns and it's going, excuse me, N is the number of columns, that's right. And uh, yeah, N, the number of columns, okay, is going to be our input space and M, the number of rows is our output space, right? Remembering V and W. So we're gonna go R3 back into R2 and you could actually look at this there too. And what you'll see is that means that T of R3 is at X1, X2, X3. It's got three components. And then it'll equal, and we just read straight across. This is going to be 4X1 minus X2 plus 0X3. See that? 4X1 minus X2 plus 0X3. And then 5X1 plus X2 plus 4X3. Get rid of your 0x3, because you don't need it. And there's your linear transformation. All right, so let's say, for example, we have t. We're going to go from v to w. And we're going to let a equal 2, 1, 3, negative 1, negative 5, 3, 0, negative 4. OK, so our input space is going to end up being um, r2. So v equals r2, OK? And w is going to equal r3, uh, excuse me, r4. So we've got t is going to go from r2 into r4. So we're going to have to find what is t of x1, x2. And it's going to end up giving me a four-dimensional vector, right? So we're going to have four answers, four answers after each one, one of our commas. The first one is going to be 2x1 plus x2. The second one is going to be 3x1 minus x2, OK? The third is going to be negative 5x1 plus 3x2. And then we'll have 0x1 and then negative 4x2. And there is your linear transformation. Notice it has four outputs. Okay? Its output vector is a, is four, it has four components. So essentially what we want to see is we want to see the relationship between our linear transformation and the matrix of the transformation. Basically, this linear transformation defined this way, going from Rm to Rn, is really easily, um, uh, can, we can really easily generate a, a, a matrix of that transformation, okay? Um, let's actually take a look at, like, for example, an example where what we have to do is we have to transform something that's in, say, a polynomial space, okay? So let's, let's look at that. 
So let's take a look at this example. We're going to go from R3 into P2R. Okay, so this matrix is going to be 3 by 3. And the reason why it's 3 by 3 is, is that the dimension of R3 is 3. The dimension of P2R is 3. Okay, so hence 3 by 3, our input space um, is 3 dimensional, our output space is 3 dimensional. So we're going to imagine that I'm going to end up with my A here is going to equal some 3 by 3 matrix. Now, my first input is going to be the A's, okay? And what you want to remember, remember on a polynomial when we transform, when we take a, a vector in R2 into a polynomial, or excuse me, in Rn to a polynomial, okay? To polynomial, or polynomial into Rn rather, it should be this way, sorry, that way. That what we're going to do is our top term is, this is the constant, and then we're gonna have the x term, then x squared, the x cubed, so on and so forth. So uh, all the way down to xn, okay? All the way down to xn. And so consequently, I've gotta actually start over here, all right? I gotta start over there with the, the constant term. And notice that a, a is my first term here, is a one in that constant term, so this is gonna be a one. And then I go to x, the x term, there's no a's, zero. And then finally, I have one a, so it's one, zero, one. Okay, next term is gonna be the B terms. And I'll notice that I've got two, negative two Bs, two Bs, and no Bs. And there we go, okay? And then my third term, my C term, okay, which will be my, th now my third column, I've got one in my constants, negative one in my X terms, and zero in my X squared terms. So this is A, the matrix of our transformation. If I wanna go backwards, what, what do I need to do? Well, this is gonna then be, okay, I'm gonna, um, I've gotta actually go backwards, okay? So what that means is, is that um, this is going to be my constant term, this will be my X term, and this will be my X squared term, okay? So I've got, right, here's A, Here's B, here's C, X1, X2, X3, and then over here is constant term, X term, and the X squared term. If that's you know problematic for you as you're working, right, okay, then um, you might just wanna use the standard basis vectors. But if I look here, I can actually now generate this. This is going to be my constant term, is gonna be A minus two B plus C, okay? A minus two B plus C, okay, there's my constant, plus two B minus C X, plus then A X squared, because there's no B or C, plus A X squared. And there is T of A B C again. Okay, and so if we're working in say something that's not necessarily um, RM to RN, we can still actually, or excuse me, RN to RM, we can still actually generate our, uh, our matrix utilizing some kind of like quick work. If you are in fact, you know, uncertain of how to do that, just go back and use the standard basis, all right? But um, this sometimes can make this process a whole heck of a lot quicker.